Imagine being young, reckless, and carefree. You are in that threshold where reality is out to get you, but you are just not ready yet. So you seek sanctuary in the comforts of your escapist fantasy, thinking you are inside a magic bubble which reality can get through. But the irony is the direction that you ran to secretly led you back into reality. Such is the case in the 2020 MMFF Best Picture Fangirl. Stay tuned as we deconstruct the film's take on inescapable reality, abuse, and metacinema. The movie is about the titular fangirl Jane, played by breakout star Charlie Dizon. Jane is the teenage-obsessed admirer of matinee idol Paolo Avellino. In this film, Paolo Avellino plays not himself, but a meta version of himself. In fiction, the concept of meta is when storytellers take something from the real world, fictionalize it, and add that version into their story. The most popular use of meta is when actors or other real-life people are added onto the story. There are a variety of reasons for this, either as a joke, fan service, marketing strategy, an additional sense of realism, or simply to make the project more relatable. Be mindful of what I said earlier. The actors in meta cinema play meta versions of themselves and not exactly themselves. Same names, somewhat same reputation, but their personalities, their background, their history and motivations are different. In 2011, nine years before Fangirl, the film's director Antonet Hadaune released a film with a similar concept, and that is Six Degrees of Separation from Lilia Kun Papai. It takes the audience into the fictionalized life of typecasted horror icon Lilia Kun Papai, who, for lack of better term, became outdated following changes in tone in the horror genre as a whole. This movie is a mockumentary, a subgenre of meta cinema wherein a fictional story is presented in a documentary style. On that same year, another meta movie was released, and it was met with financial and critical success, and that is none other than Marlon Rivera's Ang Baba is a Septic Tank. The eponymous Baba is a Septic Tank is comedy icon Eugene Domingo, who plays a meta version of herself. This movie is more similar to Fangirl since both films explore the subversion of expectations and public perception of celebrities. As the saying goes, never meet your heroes. This is a saying that we may have encountered and ignored at least once. Thankfully, most of us did not have to learn this the hard way, unlike our hero Jane. Out of pure juvenile impulse, Jane snuck behind the truck of her idol. At first, it seemed like she was just after mischief and adventure. Then it was later revealed that this is Jane's attempt of leaving her life and reality behind and live out her fantasy of being with her idol and ultimate crush. On the other hand, Paolo was on his way to live his secret second life in the province, a world which he tried so hard to hide from the public's prying eyes. Unknown to him, he was bringing Jane, an outsider, onto his secret world. And for a while, Jane thought she was living the life. Ironically, the reality that she tried to leave behind also sneaked with her in that truck. Paolo is not the pleasing gentleman that the public see him as. Instead, Jane sees an egotistical, abusive drug addict who fathers an illegitimate son. But now, before we go deeper into the themes of the film, let us first address the elephant in the room. Why did Jane in the first place want to leave her reality and life behind? During Jane's stay with Paolo, we see her mother constantly trying to call her. During these calls, we find out that her mother has a boyfriend named Benjo. When Jane comes home, we finally see the life that she tried to leave behind. She lives in a tenement wherein living spaces are so small a family would have to cram and live almost without privacy. She has neighbors with bystanders, catcallers, and judgmental gossipers. Her father is nowhere to be found, and her mother is dependent both financially and emotionally on Benjo. As abusive as he is, 
Benjo is patriarchal and misogynist, and he likes to order Jane and her mother around. Jane, just like her mother, has no control over her life, and she grew up not knowing a father figure. So she ends up trying to find love from the wrong man and the wrong place, which is the escapist realm of fiction of romantic movies. These escapist romantic movies provide a false sense of comfort in the form of a temporary escape from the stress and the harshness of reality. The problem is Jane is too young to be facing reality, and she does not have a strong parental figure to guide her through. To cope with this, she constantly escapes to the world of fiction where she believes her pain and suffering cannot get her and where everything happens ideally. Over time, she became too fixated on escapism that she started to build a fantasy of being with her idol. We see this in the opening where she skipped class to be able to attend Paolo's small tour. The reality is she is a student and she has to attend her academic engagements, but she chose to escape both literally and figuratively by attending the mall tour. And just when you thought she's done, she takes it a notch higher by sneaking into Paolo's truck. More than a satire on teenage obsession for celebrities, the movie speaks about the dangers of fanaticism, especially for the youth. Their young minds haven't gone through the entire process of character development, and they lack wisdom courage, and awareness to be able to see through abuse. Did you notice how often I use the word abuse in this video? That is because it is the deeper and all-encompassing theme of the movie. Having pure and unquestioning adoration for someone makes one prone to abuse. It is as if you give this person an easy access to manipulate you and get the most out of your admiration. In the eyes of the abused, their abuser or manipulator can do no wrong and get away with anything, and that is dangerous. Just like Jane's obsession with Paolo caused her to ignore the red flags, she desperately hopes for a glimmer of chance that the Paolo in her fantasies and the Paolo in reality are the same person or at least close, until such time that she witnesses firsthand the extent of Paolo's selfishness. With her fantasies and expectations shattered beyond repair, Jane had to make a choice whether to follow the abusive actor or decide for herself and do the right thing. She did the latter, signifying the completion of her growth as a character and as a person. Just like a person going through a heartbreak, Jane's growth did not come by choice. She was forced to. Afterwards, she went home and faced her reality and her demons. Seeing her mother being a pushover for Benjo, Jane realized that the vicious cycle of abuse and submissiveness starts at home. She saw in her mother what could potentially be her future if she doesn't act. This time, she is stripped of her naivety and has had enough of abusive men. Just like when she said no to Paolo, not literally, and played the hero to Paolo's illegitimate son, she took control of the situation at home and played the role of the hero in her family by having her mother's abusive boyfriend arrested. As they say, not all heroes wear capes. So what do you think? Have you seen Fangirl? Did you enjoy it as much as I did? Did you see any other themes in the movie? Or do you think the movie has a political commentary? Let us know in the comments below. As usual, don't forget to hit like, share, and subscribe. Till next time. Oh,